The Rebel Capitalist Show. Dude, let's talk about the yield curve. <laughs> well, okay, we'll start off with that. I, lo I, I love it. Well, you know, to me, what do, this is nothing but a no confidence vote in yeah, right. the economy. I mean, look, our economy is shit. Can I say that word? I think sure, I sure, sure. Let her rip. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, look, and I, this is no secret. I think to anyone who, who who knows what's going on, who follows your work or my work, it's just more. What they're doing is they're fist feeding us crap and dog shit. And you know, look, um, I think if we understand what's happening, I think we do. Uh, we're going to stay on the right side of this. We just got to ride this out. Um, I don't. I don't see anything major here. Uh, it's not an epiphany that we're having issues in the yield curve. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised. I don't think you are or anybody else. This is just a reflection of what is going on, despite the propaganda. Period. The end. I. I, I pretty much am ignoring it. I'm focusing more on the ten-year yield. And I, uh, right now, I don't, I don't see any red flags anywhere. I think the market is going to continue to get propped up by, by more debt. And I think oceans of it are coming, much more than we've ever had before. So that's my take on what's happening with regard to the yield curve. I, I've been telling my people, just don't worry about it at this point. I don't see anything going on. So do you think that debt, that ocean of debt that you're referring to, that's going to come through more government spending? Are you talking about the sovereign balance sheet or the corporate balance sheet or the consumer balance sheet? Or what do you think? Well, I think from right at its core, it's central banks who are going to continue to fuel it. They have to. You know the mechanism here. It's very, very simple. You know, they must continue to inflate. They've been doing this since forever. They're not going to stop. It's the mechanism to continue the debt-based economic model from functioning here. People are obviously, you know, consumer debt, household debt taking off uh, like we've never seen before. Inflation is skyrocketing. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very bad situation for people, unfortunately. They're being, people are being, you know, pressured from every possible direction and then yeah, some. Right. And in my view, I don't see an end in sight here. I don't see it because I don't see the mechanism changing at its core. It's going to continue the way it goes. It's going now. I just, uh, uh, until we hit that climax, that climax here, the, the, the grand finale is to me, and I would imagine yourself, is the, is the debt market. The debt market is going to implode. I don't know when. I don't even care when. I really don't. I'm just, you know, taking advantage of things as I see opportunity come along here. I think the fact that this is being prolonged, like every other crisis is, um, you know, gives people who have a few functioning brain cells the, the, the opportunity to get themselves on the right side of it before we get the implosion in the debt market, which is going to wreck the stock market. And then we're just going to see cash move from one set of assets into another. And mm -hmm. we're already seeing it to a certain degree. We've seen commodities take off, although we have had a big pullback recently. Um, but I think that's just a temporary, that's where the market works. You know, no asset class, no asset goes straight up, but a little drop or a big drop and you get a new floor and then we go higher because the debt is going to continue to inflate. That's the core. In my view, I look at things this way. I look at the debt market as the driver of everything. Now, because the debt market is the largest part of the market by exponents, you know, everything derives value from it. So we have a debt market hyper bubble, which is out of control. It's going to get much, much larger, faster, I think, than we've ever seen before. Um, we're going to get other assets continue to inflate and certain things are going to deflate. For example, we, we're seeing the absolute value of the dollar crater. It's going to continue to crater. Um, unfortunately, and I, I think it's by design, it's a mechanism. I think we all expected this to happen, although I do expect the relative strength of the dollar to stay high, and it has, it, it will, um, for the foreseeable future, uh, un unless some other massive force acts against it, and, and that would be, uh, I mean, obviously some kind of a world war maybe, or, or something along those lines. Yeah, so we got to differentiate between the dollar on the DXY against other foreign currencies, which to your point might be stable short term. Uh, and then compartmentalize that with uh, the dollar relative to goods and services here in the United States. And the dollar is just getting crushed, as we know, relative to goods and services. And uh, that's really what matters to the average Joe and Jane. So do you think that mechanism that you're talking about with the Fed uh, just keep doing what they're doing? Is that really because they're, you know, tape, they're so-called tapering down to zero. They've done that. Um, do you think that they're just going to keep doing what they're doing in the form of keeping real interest rates negative 
because right now, you know, we're at what 25 basis points, maybe a little higher between 25 and 50 basis points, but yet we've got a Left. CPI print at 8%. So let's just call it negative real rates at 7.5. And you and I both know that the real rate of inflation is far higher than that. So we've probably got negative 15% interest rates. <laughs> so do you think they're just going to keep uh, moving forward with that game plan? Or do you see them going back to quantitative easing or dropping rates back to zero? All I can tell you is the mechanism in place here is, is deliberate. It's being, it's designed to do this and people are getting crushed. And I do con con consider the fact that it will continue in this manner. These incremental raises in the federal funds rate, it's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. When you look at all the things that you had just pointed out, as a matter of fact, just this morning, what did we get? We found out that uh, wages are rising at 0.4% last month. And we have the uh, inflation, you know, surging higher people are getting robbed blind and this mechanism of grand theft on an unimaginable scale is going to continue and continue and in my view it's going to get worse that look central banks in my view again and i would I, I would be hard pressed to believe that you don't believe this are going to continue to inflate um their mission is to inflate and they and it's not even look that's the mechanism they must do it um in order to continue to this system functioning. We have to continue to pull debt from the future in greater and greater amounts. It can't be static. It must, it must exponentially increase. And they're going to do things to us and throw things at us, crisis after crisis, uh, expansions of wars and whatever else to make sure that mechanism stays in place. Right. It's not going to stop. And I, I want people who, who follow your, your work and mine to understand that. So that gives people an enormous amount of, of, of power and strength, just realizing the mechanism and how it's in place here, ignoring the propaganda ministry, the mainstream channel, because it's all bullshit. And, and their job is to mislead people, distract them, deflect them from the truth, uh, and, and, and feed them garbage. So th thankfully, there are shows like yours out here that are allowing people to, to get a real handle on what's going on. Because look, to me, this is about it's so much bigger than, than what we see. I want people to embrace the fact that we are all responsible for each other, that we need to, to come together and realize what they're doing to us and weaponize the system against them because they're trying to kill us. I mean, in a literal sense. So if we could flip the tables around here by looking at the situation and say, okay, what do I need to do? Well, that's, I think, what you, you and me are trying to do. We're trying to get people on the right side and keep them there. Yeah, number uh, one, until you have to be educated and you have to be aware of what's going on. You know, Greg, one story that I was looking at this morning that really highlights exactly what you're saying is the ECB and Christine Lagarde is coming out and saying, well, we were going to lay off the quantitative easing. We were going to lay off the monetary heroin. But right now, we, we might have to pump the brakes on that a little bit because of everything that's going on. Of course, they blame it on Putin. They blame it on Ukraine, Russia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. They keep saying that uh, it, they're still holding to this thing that inflation is transitory over there. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen the, the headline numbers of the CPI in Europe, but it's going up at the same rate that it's going up here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're basically saying that we're going to continue quantitative easing even though the CPI rate is going higher and higher and higher, and to your point, stealing purchasing power away from the average Joe and Jane. I mean, I want to connect the dots there for people listening, because that's really what you're saying. You're saying that the government's run up all of this debt, and the way that they get rid of that debt is they inflate it away. But that's a, a, but what they're doing, what most people don't realize, is they're, st they're, they're having to take that purchasing power from someone. There is no free lunch. So if the government is going to reduce their debt load or reduce their debt burden, they're going to increase the burden from the average Joe and Jane, from the poor and middle class, through this insidious tax called inflation. Yes. And my point there is they're, they're doing it in the United States. They're doing it in uh, Europe. And in Europe, they're maybe even doing it to a greater degree. And even in Japan, did you see that? You know, they said that they're going to buy an unlimited amount of 10-year treasuries to keep it at 25 basis points, even though their CPI there, their inflation rate is going higher and higher and higher as well. It's a worldwide phenomenon. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, it is. I'm, I'm so happy you brought that up because that's what I've been telling people too. This is a global phenomenon, what's yeah. happening here. And what the, the European Central Bank is doing here, the Fed's going to follow suit. They, they kind of work in lockstep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all the nonsense about, oh, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Just ignore it all. If we understand that the mechanism, again, is they're going to continue to inflate uh, on an unprecedented scale and it's not going to stop. And, all you know, all this is, is a massive, epic wealth transfer effect from one group of people to another and elimination of an entire class of people. Um, And it's getting progressively worse faster. You know, people like you and me and and people who follow our work, I think they've been well aware that and been made aware that this phenomenon would happen from years ago, years and years ago. But now they're seeing it. And I I, I think, I, I really hope that people are starting to wake up. I think they are. I really do, because I hear from more and more people from all over the world, just like you, I'm sure. And people are seeing what's going on. And that raising awareness, like you had just said, I mean, people, that's what they need to do. Become aware of what they're doing and why they are doing it. And um, I think people, again, are starting to realize all this. So that puts them in a tremendous position of strength, at least yeah. knowing what they should be doing moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And then also understanding, I mean, I, I was listening to one of your recent videos and you're talking about the propaganda that's coming out with the mainstream media saying how the U.S. economy is great, how it's it's booming, you know, just echoing whatever Jerome Powell wants to shove down our throats yeah. or Christine Lagarde over in Europe. And I, I think they're doing the same thing with the, the war in Russia. Uh, it's it's all propaganda. You know, it's, it's propaganda of the West. It's propaganda in Russia. Uh, there, you know, uh, Russia doesn't have a monopoly on propaganda, on media propaganda, that's for sure.